Rossiter United, welcome to Chapter 4. We'll begin our exploration of ancient Egypt, starting off with Lesson 1, Geography. With this lesson, we want to understand that the, the water and the fertile soil of the Nile River Valley allowed this great civilization to develop in Egypt over a long period of time. So let's take a look at the geography of Egypt. You have the northeastern corner of the continent of Africa, right where it meets with the uh, Middle East. You have the Sinai Peninsula, area of land surrounded on three sides by water. Here's Saudi Arabia, Israel. So this is the Fertile Crescent, which we just explored with Mesopotamia. And here is Egypt. Now, modern-day Egypt is this entire area up here. In regards to our study of the ancient civilization, this stretch of the Nile by itself is Egypt. Some things about Egypt that made it difficult to invade is that you have the western and the entire northern part of Africa as the Sahara Desert, largest desert in the world, which is very difficult for invading armies to cross. You also have large bodies of water to the north, the Mediterranean Sea, very important, and then the Red Sea, which separates Africa from the Middle East. You also have, along the river, if you see these red marks, these are major cataracts of the Nile. These are river rapids. So if you've ever seen anybody going whitewater rafting, as wild as those rivers are, with a lot of rocks, a lot of high-speed water, you have that all up and down the Nile River, which makes it very difficult for large warships to travel up and down. Egypt is referred to as the gift of the Nile by Greek historian Herodotus because the Nile River allowed Egypt to become great. Its gifts allowed it to grow. The Nile River is the longest river on Earth, over 4,000 miles long. Every summer and fall, you have major rainfalls in this region of Africa. You also have um, snow melts from some of the taller peaks in Africa, which are in this area as well, that will flow downstream into the Mediterranean Sea. As it does so, the rainfall causes flooding to occur, the water overflows the banks, and creates rich soil. As it reaches the end, it splits into many shallow branches in a triangular shape known as a delta. The reason this is called Upper Egypt is because this elevation is higher. Upper Egypt is upstream. Lower Egypt is at a lower elevation above sea level. We see a lot of comparisons between Mesopotamia and Egypt. Both civilizations began as hunter-gatherers. Both of them grew plants and animals as they learned how to manage water. They settled near rivers and water sources, and then they used irrigation, such as canals, to bring water from those rivers to their farms, and they were able to grow their villages to towns and to cities. The biggest differences between Mesopotamia and Egypt in their growth is that Mesopotamians used basins to store water. They held on to it. The Egyptians didn't need basins because there was an abundance of water readily available, so they created more canals instead. And the Mesopotamians constantly had to rebuild cities due to invasions. Babylon grew, Babylon fell. The Egyptians didn't need to worry about that because they had all of those geographic features surrounding. They did not have to worry about invasions. But because you had Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, we saw two separate kingdoms. The term unify means to bring many parts together to create a stronger unit. The king of Upper Egypt, Menes, sought to unite all of Egypt, so he invaded and conquered parts of Lower Egypt, and then, to consolidate power, he married the princess of Lower Egypt. Consolidate means to strengthen by bringing many parts together. And because he was able to strengthen his power, he became the first pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt. In order to demonstrate the unification of Egypt, Menes combined a lot of symbols of both. For example, the crown of Egypt. He combined the upper Egyptian crown, which was white, and the lower Egyptian crown, which was red, and brought them together for one unified Egyptian crown. And he passed power down to his sons and grandsons, which began this dynasty. That'll do it for ancient Egypt. We'll see you next lesson.